National's leader has wasted no time in appointing a new finance spokesperson, Amy Adams. The Selwyn MP will be ranked third in caucus behind Simon Bridges and Paula Bennett, the deputy. Of course, the former Associate Finance Minister's appointment comes a day after her predecessor, Stephen Joyce, announced he was quitting Parliament and he'd been told he wouldn't be getting the job. Speaking to reporters in Christchurch, Ms Adams was asked how she compares to Mr Joyce and, of course, Bill English. Well, look, both Stephen Joyce and, and Bill English before him uh, have been outstanding finance ministers and finance spokespeople. Uh, I would certainly not want to move away significantly from, from the work that National's been doing under both of those uh, gentlemen. We're a team. The policies we've been running are the policies of us all. But I guess my approach is, is uh, certainly one of, of listening and reflecting and, and making the connection uh, with New Zealanders that actually when we talk about economic growth, when we talk about strong fiscal management, it's, it's a means to an end. It's not an end in itself. It's about ensuring New Zealanders can have the job jobs they want, good, e good incomes, opportunities and actually if you think about all of the things that New Zealand treasures, whether it's the environment, whether it's standard of living, all of those things are underpinned by a strong economy. Is there an $11.7 billion hole in the government's plan? Well, I think the point we were making during the election campaign, and it's one we haven't resiled from, is that the numbers they put out simply didn't allow for the pressures that they will face and are already facing in government. So we know that governments face uh, c considerable pressures around demographic changes, around inflationary costs, just in the cost pressures of, of running the country, uh, not to mention all of the initiatives that they will want to run. And what was really clear to us is that they hadn't allowed for any of that in their costing. So what we said in the campaign and what we stick with is that the costings they put out didn't allow them a single extra dollar to manage any of those cost pressures and if they were going to manage them in the way that we thought would be a conservative estimate of what was required then that was a sort of gap. Actually listening to the speech from the throne which had 51 uh, expensive promises included in it I think you might find that those uh, those pressures become even tighter. And early signs from Grant Robertson uh, that he's already scrimping and saving cutting valuable programs to, to make up that shortfall. Do you still think the gap is that big? I mean it's quite an extreme amount. Look I wouldn't be surprised surprised if the gap ends up being uh, considerably more than that. If you look at what uh, they will be required to spend to fund demographic pressures, cost pressures uh, and their very expensive commitments that they've made through the campaign, in the speech from the throne and since. I mean the numbers that the government has put out already are very, very light on costings. Now whether they haven't worked out the costs or they know them and haven't included them, neither is acceptable. I think New Zealand needs to be told exactly what the costs are of these very, very expensive commitments the government's made that they haven't fronted up on. Already we know that debt is going to be $10 billion higher by 2022 under this government and that's before they include the cost of things like the 15 billion dollar uh, light rail system, the, the Dunedin hospital upgrade, uh, Waikaria prison, the provincial growth fund. So we're talking big big numbers of things that aren't, in the, aren't included in the numbers and even with what we have seen it's 10 billion dollars more uh, than would have been the case under national. So this government is being very big on talk, very big on promises but very light on detail. Amy Adams.